Not having the yellow text opening crawl is the new black. But still reading. How omniscient are these opening titles supposed to be? Normally they're essentially biographical, telling us about the status of the rebellion or the fine details of trade agreements and their impact on intergalactic legislation. But this shit's telling us what's in the heart and mind of Han f***ing Solo. I don't think even Han knows what's really in the heart and mind of Han Solo in this movie. Adding a Star Wars story to the end of this film's title is really infuriating. Like, we need to know that Han Solo is part of the Star Wars universe. Or maybe they were concerned about being confused as a reboot for that shitty Mario Van Peebles cyborg movie. <laughs> Mario Van Peebles. Dice. The dice that have been so goddamn important to all the movies up until now. This is worth... Five, six hundred credits. That's more than you said we'd need. To buy our way out of the control zone and off Corellia. You guys are just reminding each other of you both already know. Expositional aspiration. Exasperation? Lady Proxima is a prawn, basically. She spends her time underwater and only emerges in this dramatic fashion when business requires it. I can totally see how she came to power in this almost entirely above land society. <laughs> Premature celebration. Thought we'd get a little more of a head start. Yeah, what's up with that? Dude left well after Han, and it's not like they've been puttering along toward the airport. Not to mention he knew exactly where they were going. Sure, it makes sense that they'd make a run for the launch pad, but what if they decided to lay low for a few days? Solo, a Tokyo Drift story. All over! Did I hear Wilhelm in there? I'm almost positive I did. So does that make it a Hanhelm? A Wilhelm? It's at this point that I realize this has been a pretty low speed chase for the last minute or so. I honestly haven't been this riveted since that scene in Mitchell. Sold to Crimson Dawn or the Hot Cartel. That's not gonna happen. I won't let it. Character says he won't allow something to happen immediately before allowing that exact thing to happen cliche. Han palming the dice to the Targaryen here 100% foretells that she's coming back before the movie ends because I saw The Last Jedi, goddammit. Also, here's another sin for The Last Jedi just because I can. Several things here. First, why wouldn't Moloch immediately check the line for the immigrants? Isn't that the only place Han and Kira could get through to escape? Also, there aren't even that many people here. Like, a quick swing around this tiny terminal would easily turn up your fugitives. I'm not saying that I'm rooting for Moloch to do this shit. I'm just saying it's stupid that he didn't. Join the Empire. Learn valuable skills. Convenient recruitment center is massively convenient. Um, what? Who are your people? I'm alone. Um, Solo. Give me a goddamn fucking break. Also, Rolo Solos. I'll take this mouthy scooch and we'll go around to the right. Mouthy scooch is all of the following. A hilarious insult, a Canadian nickname for a yappy dog, a popular spicy Albanian cola drink, and the name of my new R-rated ska revival band. Stick to soldiering, kid. You don't want any part of this. Not since Tim Meadows and Walk Hard has someone said a more enticing and phony you don't want any part of this line. In three hours, we move out for the southern marshlands. Besides the introduction of Beckett, what does any of this bring to the table. Do we really need several scenes of war footage and strategy speeches? I'll do whatever it takes to get back to Corellia. I've already been away too long. It's been three years though, right? If Han's this intent on going AWOL from the Empire, is this movie telling me he really hasn't had a chance before now? Haven't fed him in three days. <laughs> Should be fun. So up until now, Chewie was just eating all his cellmates? That is dark, little Ronnie Howard. Dark! Han survives this. Also, they make it sound like Chewie's a ravenous badass, and of course, we know he can rip a fool's arms off if he wants. So why all this playing with his food? He hasn't eaten in three days. Han should be all the dead right now. I guess it's kind of funny that Han already speaks Wookiee, but it sure does create an easy escape for both of them that is uber convenient. Wow, good thing there are no troops around this Imperial ship that is currently being hella stolen. Thanks for helping me get out of there. Nice sentiment and all, but is this the first chance they've had to have this conversation? They've made it all the way to another planet, and they just shared a shower together. That's a perfect place to chat. Chewbacca? All right, well, uh, you're gonna need a nickname, because I ain't saying that every time. Har har har. This movie could have been great if you'd spent less time paying so much lip service to the films that came before it. A nod here, a hand job there. It gets to be obvious to the viewer, and therefore less enjoyable. You might as well have him turn to the camera and tell the audience, You love me? I know! Our whole future depends on this one school, and you bring in amateurs. Gotta side with Val here. Why would Beckett bring in amateurs for their one final score? This is like Danny Ocean bringing the actual Bruce Willis into their heist in Ocean's 12. I waited a long time for a shot like this. I'm not about to screw it up. You know, I bet Han's palms are sweaty right now. His knees must also be weak, since he's sitting. Those arms definitely look heavy. And what's that on his sweater? Mom's spaghetti? Have you ever tried to disinvite a Wookiee to anything? Not a good idea. <laughs> Damn it, Rio is one of the most fun characters in this movie, and I'm sending the f out of it for killing his ass way too early. Tell us about the girl, Han. Is she nice? Does she have sharp teeth? Man, John Favreau is discount Steve buscemi so hard here, I literally had to check IMDb three times to make certain it was John Favreau and not Steve Buscemi. Huh, what do you know? White men can jump. Why does it take three individuals to do the shit on the train? They're essentially just tying some cables down, but no one wants to help Val with the much more dangerous part of the mission? I'm just saying, if they didn't have Chewie and Han, this would have probably gone much smoother. Relaxing, enough to power a fleet. 
fucking fuel. Here they come! Get down to the couplers! What the hell? There was no part of the plan that Beckett laid out earlier that involved getting shot at by armed guards. Also, if there is a security presence on this train, why the hell are they all the way back there? Isn't this the most valuable compartment by far? Really? off. I looked it up. Chewy 7.3 and almost 112 kilograms, which is Canadian for 250 pounds. Ain't no way Han is pulling him back on the train with one f***ing hand. The enemy soldiers have magnetic boots, which, given the amount of raw planning Woody and company did, is something the heist crew should all be wearing as well, right? On his first heist, Han is given an opportunity to prove his piloting skills. What are the f***ing odds? You aren't lying, kid. You're a hell of a pilot. Thanks for telling me. Honestly, nothing he's done so far look remotely complicated, but thanks to your trained eye, which I trust because you also are a pilot, I now know he truly is a hell of a pilot. She just killed herself so the score could carry on. For money. For her husband and his crew. She didn't think her life was worth more than a score. Like, everyone in the crew would rather have her live and they go on for another score down the road. But not her. It's not like her death is for the greater good or anything. This is an attempt to steal for profit! I'm sorry, this death has no emotional weight for me because it makes no logical sense. This movie suffers from a common cinema affliction these days. Last seconditis. As though every bomb exploding, train derailing, airplane crashing, vehicle skidding toward a cliff, as though all that sh utterly requires being pushed to the very last second, which it does not. Tension does not require razor edge margins of victory. Galaxy Quest made fun of this garbage writing almost 20 years ago. <laughs> Tin cup proof tense finales don't even require protagonist victory. As though them pulling up the train car 200 yards sooner and us watching the rest of the cars fall to their deaths wouldn't have been as thrilling or interesting. And Han releases the payload anyway to aid their escape, making Tandy's sacrifice even less meaningful than it already was. And it started out at fucking zero. Jesus. If you wanted Woody to suffer loss and his lady to die in a heroic way, I can think of a dozen better ways you could have written this We were hired by Crimson Dawn. Isn't that the group that Hans Gruber read about in Time Magazine? For me, it's worth the risk. How about you? This is the quickest I've seen a civilian fully commit to a life of crime since the Amazing Yen in Ocean's Eleven. In this movie's version of a rich crime lord's space yacht penthouse, we have a singer with a Bane pacifier and half a Shazam-themed Lazy Susan on her head, beside one of the more disgusting Ripley clone fails from Alien Resurrection, plus thousands of sequins. Paul Bettany, now having appeared in Star Wars and Marvel movies, is hereby literally 30% owned by Disney. What are you doing here? I, I work here. As I've said before, space is really, really big. So what are the odds Han and Kira find each other on this f***ing yacht? Please, someone with an advanced mathematics degree, show me what the actual f***ing odds are of this happening. And if you come back with an interstellar type love answer, I will f***ing scream at you. Well, that is good news because you're going with him. This is weird. Suddenly he doesn't trust someone. So he sends Khaleesi on the mission even though he also doesn't fully trust her? What the f***? I know a guy. And I know just where to find him. Boy, this is some geographical oddity, isn't it? Not only did the heist occur on Vandor 1, and Voss decided to bring his yacht to that planet, there's also a very famous smuggler with an incredibly fast ship on this same planet, within walking distance! Charisma, not to mention his prodigious... We get it. Is that a cock joke thrown in the middle of a Star Wars movie? Because I think that was a cock joke thrown in the middle of a Star Wars movie. All we need is a ship. Well, he'll never part with it. He loves that ship. <sighs> Is there literally only one ship in the entire universe they can use for this caper? If so, maybe the caper's not worth the risk, eh? Pretty f***ing bad odds from where I sit. The seat taken? Nobody's in the seat getting any taken, friend. Wow, this might apply for a poker game. Or at least this poker game. But as a general life rule, this is some terrible f***ing advice. Try this empty seats are claimable bullshit with the director's chair on a movie set. Or at the Masters. Or in Buckingham f***ing Palace. Also, movie takes nearly an hour to Lando, and that is definitely a sin. Anything, Han? That's Han, but... That's okay. This attempt to retcon Billy D. Williams' odd pronunciation of the name in the original trilogy makes me super angry. Not everything we wondered about needs a f***ing explanation! God, it's like modern movies want to stamp out human imagination rather than inspiring it. Oh, great hand. Way too much footage of this alien poker game that ultimately means nothing since no one knows how it's played. I'll see you 2000, and I'll raise you however much this is. Splashing the pot. And I'm calling with what? My ship. Against your ship. Yeah, but that's not how calling works. Han put his chips into the pot, which was on top of the $2,000 bet. So if Lando calls with his ship, it's to cover the chips that are on the table. New move. We're making the Kessel Run. This movie makes the Kessel Run sound famous, but then immediately points out how impossible it is, which means only a few could have even tried it, making me wonder how it ever got famous. Other than the mention in the original trilogy, of course. I'm gonna need half the take. You don't even know how much the take is, though. Why speak in fractions before you even know the total haul in dollars or credits or whatevers? I'm gonna flip your switch! 
Good luck finding it. Is that a G-Spot joke thrown in the middle of a Star Wars movie? Because I think that was a G-Spot joke thrown in the middle of a Star Wars movie. And what if I don't elect to go to Kessel? Please don't start. <laughs> she said that, and then he waited hundreds of steps until they were all the way outside on the ramp before he responded with don't start. Can Hollywood start coming up with less lazy transitions so dialogue doesn't get used as sinew between unconnected shots? I actually would have a memory wiped. But she's got the best damn navigational database in the galaxy. Seems like the Star Wars movies are f***ing littered with people that are the best damn something in the galaxy. We've attached the homing beacon. They won't elude us now. Yeah, but they didn't elude you before either, right? You showed up to f*** up the train heist just in time. Also, how did Enfys know they were going out to get more coaxium? It's not like she was in the meeting with Voss. And even if she saw Han and Lando together, there's no way she'd know for sure what they were up to. My dad worked the line of the CEC plant before he got laid off. He built these. Someone thought Han needed a personal connection to the Millennium Falcon, so this dad got written, and none of the smart people on this production managed to stop it before it got filmed and made the final cut. Look, this guy doesn't look like Han or sound like Han, but somehow he still feels like Han. And that is enough. It's kind of amazing. I don't take a sin off. While you guys tear up or get horny watching him passionately kiss some not Princess Leia woman, I'd like to point out a more important issue which is that these rods have nothing to keep these hangers from sliding off. Someone really wanted the hangers to have unbroken circles at the top, meaning we needed closet rods with open ends. But then they stopped there and started logic in the face and kicked it into the fires of Mount Doom. Am I interrupting something? I hear this move is called Mickey Knox Block and Cock. We got a good thing going here, me, you, Chewie. Yeah. Right? The makings of a solid crew. You just had two other crew members killed in a failed heist, asshole. Assume everyone will betray you and you will never be disappointed. Jesus Christ, can Beckett telegraph he's gonna eventually turn on Han any harder during this trip? You need anything. Equal rights? L3's quest for droid citizenship is played for laughs here, but we won't be laughing when the robots start asking for rights here in the real world. We'll be screaming. Screaming at the latest horror film directed by a robot as we scarf down popcorn made by a robot in a home theater made by robots while a robot version of my college girlfriend jerks off my robot That Lando has feelings for me. Sometimes I think, maybe. How would that work? It works. No, seriously, how the f*** does that work? God damn it, movie's dropping all kinds of odd sex references here with no follow-up, simply because it thinks the idea is funny. I want to see how that works. Do not improvise. Saying this to Han Solo in a movie named after him seems like wasted breath and time for everyone involved, including me. F***ing <laughs> dice are back. Yep, we're even squeezing Lando's Return of the Jedi helmet into this thing because do all the nostalgia! After Rogue One, I'm not surprised, but I am disappointed. Freedom. Sure, the droids are taking off their restraining bolts, whatever the f*** those are, but how would that modify their programming? They're probably grateful, but once they're off, they all turn into William Wallace? <laughs> Holy sh**! Of course, the alien vault guard has an external set of sensitive sex organs in the exact same place as a human. Jesus, there are more crotchal references in this movie than I remembered. You guys are not gonna believe what I'm seeing up here. You better come take a look at this cliche. <laughs> Chewbacca ex machina! Chewbacca? So let's immediately start firing at this large supply of a highly unstable element. L3 isn't gonna make it, so Lando goes in. And Lando isn't gonna make it, so Han goes in. Then Han isn't gonna make it, so a Wookiee goes in. This is like the Russian nesting dolls of action scene writing. I'm legit surprised Chewie didn't run into trouble and cause Khaleesi to have to come out here too. What? Where the hell have those motherfuckers been this whole time? L3! I know he's sad and we're supposed to be sad, but I can't help but think, dude, you f***ed a robot. That's whack. Could use a co-pilot. Now watch Chewie die inside for the next few seconds. You can't make the Kessel run in less than 20 parsecs. F***ing parsecs. Are they distance? Are they time? You don't know! The entire Star Wars canon doesn't know! This whole trial is out of order! Attica! Attica! Into the mouse room. Can't do it without L3. It's possible we can download her brain into the Falcon's Nava computer, right? Could we? Theoretically. Well, you got five seconds to test that theory, you time-wasting arguing dicks. Also, leave it to Han to basically break the Kessel Run record by cheating. He's the James T. Kirk of this particular Kesselashi Maroon. Are they on us? Like Rashnold on a Kylak. I, I don't know what that means. I'm telling you, I don't know what that means has become the cheap modern comedic equivalent of, did I do that? We need to divert auxiliary power to the rear deflector shield. Because we're now showing a run Han famously bragged about making in record time distance, we're robbed here as viewers of the chance to feel any tension for like more than 10 f***ing minutes. The characters feel tension, but they're paid actors. I know he makes it and does so in record fashion, so all these speed bumps along the way are just red herrings. She's interfacing. She's part of the ship now. Awesome. So all that talk a few minutes ago about how difficult this would be was bullshit, right? This took one cable in two seconds. Buckle in now, fans, as we follow Han again while he pilots this ship again away from a sudden ginormous space alien again. Again.
This movie has two new ideas and everything else is just a callback, an homage, a ripoff, or an audience applause break. This goes on for some time. Now! Now! This doesn't work? What the hell? I had a raging sin boner and now the movie subverted it by sacrifice. Oh, that's the stuff. This works. Just did the castle run in 12 parsecs. Great kid, don't get cocky. I hate you. Oh no. God damn it, this movie left no nostalgia stone unturned. And it's offensive. Back in. The f There were panels ripped off the fing Falcon when they were trying to fly it out of the gravity well, but the movie saying Emphis Nest's aftermarket tracking thingamajig stayed on and kept working that entire time. Okay, Nest and her crew end up being the seeds of the Rebellion. Which is a cool twist and all, but what was with all that threatening earlier in the movie? They've literally tried to kill Beckett before, and did kill Rhea. But now that Beckett has the coaxium, we're just gonna have a powwow? Really seems like they shoehorned this rebel storyline in here hard. I need a drink. Bring them inside. This bartender should be fired. It's like three sips of alcohol you just spilled on the table, you ass. Not this time. I'm leaving. Hang on, is he pretending to run? Like, without the profits or the coaxium? How the f*** when Han actually believed this? By some miracle you make it out of here, find me on Tatooine. What's on Tatooine? Why would Beckett even mention this? He knows Han's coming up to see Voss, and wants the outcome to be certain death. So why say anything at all, unless you're just trying to cram another nostalgic storyline reference in? I don't know everything. No, just a bit more than you. It's not like Han is just missing small signals of pending betrayal and scum and villainy. This sh is right in his face. Oh. I'm talking about my other associate. Can you come in and join us, please? Dum, dum, dum! I mean, who the f else was it gonna be? But I'm also an entrepreneur. I mean, you of all people understand that. I'm making a huge mistake. What about the situation got Beckett all horned up to take the coaxium? Even before the subterfuge, everyone was terrified of Dryden Voss and wouldn't cross him. Now we're perfectly fine stealing directly in front of him? Go, I'm right behind you. Even if Han weren't clouded by his boner, shouldn't he get a few more details? Are they meeting at the refinery? Is she backing him up against Beckett? Where are they getting a ship? I'm just saying a few more lines of dialogue would make this villain turn a little harder to predict. <laughs> oh no, it's Darth Maul! And between him, the Force Ghosts, and Leia's space odyssey in Last Jedi, there goes my ability to get it up for any major character's death in this franchise. Kira, you and I will be working much more closely from now on. I don't know about that, dude. Did you see the box office numbers for this thing? I hope you're still paying attention because now I'm gonna tell you the most important- Movie takes a firm stance on whether or not Han is the type to shoot first. You fold now, you walk away with enough to get yourself your own little ship. You call. I'm gonna clean you out again. Movie does give us a little more Lando, which is always welcome, but this ending feels more tacked on than the Jai Ho sequence at the end of Slumdog Millionaire. Beckett said he heard about this very big gangster putting together a job. God damn it, we're cramming Jabba into this story too? Everything important in Han's life happened within a week. Why did it have to be snakes? Stick to soldiering, kid. You don't want any part of this. You don't want no part of this. What company do you? None of your business in? company. And we're full up. Sell crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. That day. Sometimes, a lot of times, I think. I appreciate your honesty. You're a real straight shooter. It's no big deal. Whatever. Yeah, I had to try one on. Knock it! Then why'd you do it? That's why, baby. Are you using my babies now? 